Good afternoon, sir. Are you James Edward Cavender? Yes, sir. Mr. Cavender, we have two cases that are going to be addressed today. You're here with your lawyer, Mr. John Bush. The first case is file number 231719. In that case, you're charged in count one with receiving concealing a stolen motor vehicle, a GMC Sierra. That's a felony punishable by up to five years imprisonment and a fine of up to $10,000. Count two, you're charged with making an assault with a car upon Keisha Cutler. That's a felony punishable by up to four years imprisonment and a fine of up to $2,000. Also a fixture. No, I guess it doesn't. Now, the other one is resisting and obstructing a police officer alleged that you did resist, obstruct, batter, wound, or oppose <coughs> Officer Trevor Wortman with the Sturgis Police Department. You're charged as a fourth habitual offender, making this punishable potentially by up to life imprisonment, I believe, 15 years or more. Uh, prosecuting Attorney uh, Assistant Deborah Davis is here on behalf of the state, as is Mr. Wortman. Uh, Mr. Cavender, a preliminary examination is a hearing where the prosecution must establish beyond a standard of probable cause that a crime was committed, probable cause to believe that you did it. So you're not going to be found guilty or not guilty, no matter what happens at this hearing, simply a probable cause hearing. Ms. Davis, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor, I would like to, um, I guess, put some information on the record so that Mr. Cavender is well aware of what may happen today. <clears throat> If he chooses to go forward with the preliminary examination, we will be asking to um, amend the felony complaint in this case. We will be taking off the resisting and obstructing police officer, and instead there will be a five-year uh, minimum, I'm sorry, five-year charge for fleeing and eluding in the third degree, um, as opposed to this two-year assaulting, resisting, obstructing. In addition, on his other file that is up for today, uh, that is the case with Michigan State Police from May 12th of 2023. We'd be seeking to add a count one of carjacking, which is a uh, maximum life offense, and also adding an obstruction of justice charge for giving his false name uh, to police during this. With that, uh, if he's bound over on the carjacking um, in particular, it would qualify for the 25 year mandatory minimum as a fourth offender, uh, fourth of the two offender. We'd be asking um, to bind over on that, which would then um, allow us to add that 25 year mandatory minimum. So I want him to be well aware of what may happen today. Um, the witness for the carjacking is here and willing to testify. So if that's, uh, obviously, I, I've asked that he be given the chance to speak with his attorney about this, um, and then we can move forward. Thank you. Have you relayed that to Mr. Bush? No, I have not seen him today. I wish you weren't doing this on your time rather than my time. We're, uh, he's now going to need to confer with his client, probably, and we're burning daylight, six prelims to do. Um, Mr. Bush, do you wish to confer with your client? He, he, he wants a prelim and trial hearing. That was my understanding from the start. And I understand you didn't charge this, somebody else did, but maybe it should have been charged. Let's start. Um, all right, um, you may call your first witness. Your Honor, the people will call Officer Dylan Ware. Come right up into the witness box, if you would. Good afternoon, you swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. I do. Thank you, please have a seat. Officer Ware, would you state your full name and spell both your first and your last name for the record, please? It's Officer Dylan Michael Ware, D-I-L-L-A-N, last name W-A-R-E. And you work for the Sturgis Police Department as an officer? Yes. And how long have you been a police officer? For Sturgis, Michigan, coming up probably in six months. 
And were you on duty for the city of Sturgis on September 6th, 2023 as an officer? Yes. And uh, were you in a fully marked patrol vehicle that day? Yes. And were you in your um, uniform that you are issued on that day? Yes. And did you come into contact with a James Cavender? I did. And uh, tell me about your contact with this individual. So my contact with him started after I had followed a alleged stolen vehicle, which was confirmed. And as soon as I made contact with the driver, he was later identified as James Cavender. And the person that uh, you believe was the driver of that vehicle, is he here in the courtroom today? He is. And can you point him out and describe him for the record, please? He was going to be in the green striped shirt in the wheelchair. Your Honor, may the record reflect he's identified the defendant? It may. And Officer Ware, uh, when did you find out that there was this potential stolen vehicle? It was put out as a BOL through dispatch that multiple people had called in saying they saw the vehicle. It had been posted on Facebook about it being stolen and they all recognized it. And can you describe the vehicle? It was a single cab pickup truck that had been spray painted with gray spray paint, previously green. And where was this truck when you saw it? It was crossing over Pioneer Street. It was going down Pioneer Street, crossing over Congress Street. And at that time, uh, did you have your lights and sirens activated? I did. And how close were you to uh, this vehicle? I was a couple blocks west of it. And what did you do after you spotted the vehicle? I proceeded to follow it and I got behind it. And at that point, I then saw it going through yards and then hit a tree. How close were you to the vehicle when it was going through the yards and hitting the tree? About a block or two. After it hit the tree, what happened? It stopped. I got on my vehicle and told the driver to keep his hands up, which he did. And he stayed in the vehicle. And that driver was Mr. Cavender? Yes. Was there anybody else in the vehicle? There was not. Did you stay with Mr. Cavender um, when he was taken to the hospital? I did not. And uh, who took him to the hospital? The Sturgis Ambulance. And did you have contact with him at the hospital? Yes. And tell me about that contact that you had with him. So I walked in the room after deputies had already been talking with him and I helped him get onto the stretcher to then bring him to the county jail. And so were you with him from that time until he was taken um, to the county jail? Yes. During that time, did he make any statements about the uh, vehicle that he had been driving? Yes, several. And what did he say about the vehicle? Uh, a couple different things referencing that he did not know was stolen, however, paid $50 for it. He kept bringing that up. Also stated that if it was stolen, he would have swapped out the license plates. Um, so go ahead. Did he say when he had purchased this truck? It was recent. I don't remember the exact time. Okay. And did he make any statements about whether or not he had seen police officers uh, or knew that he was being pulled over? I believe he did, yes. And if you recall what he said? He was stating that they should not have been following him down the road and that there was no reason to chase him, going as fast as they did. There were several officers that were involved in this incident. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay. You said it went through, I think, you used the term yards, you plural. So in this black, did it? Can you kind of describe what it did as it went down that street? Yeah, so the roads, it curves on the two different roads right there. So it's kind of like an S right there. And he crossed over one yard, then another, and then drove through two before hitting a tree at one of the yards. Was was it a heavy impact? It didn't appear to be, however, their bags did deploy. And what condition was Mr. Cavender when he encountered him? He was okay, his hands were up. He kept telling me that uh, he believed the truck was on fire. However, there was nothing to show that. What was the decision to have him go to the hospital? He began complaining of leg pains from a previous uh, issue he had and continued complaining about leg, neck, 
certain pains he had from a previous issue he dealt with. Um, Mr. Cavender, yes, sir. Um, everything you say is being picked up by the microphones. So uh, if you need a, something to write on, I'll give you something you need a pad. All right, nice. Any further questions? Just briefly, what is the speed limit on those side streets where he was traveling? It's between 25 and 30. And this all happened in the city of Sturgis, correct? Yes. And that's in St. Joseph County, Michigan? Yes. No further questions. Uh, you're free to step down. He's writing this. Okay. Maybe Mr. Bush has some additional questions. In any part of your investigation, did you determine who owned the stolen vehicle? Yes, I was informed who owned it. And who was that? It was a David Setbetter, I believe, for your counsel's name. Are you acquainted with him? I am not. You're not a friend or acquaintance of his? No. Is it Setter Blad? It could be Setter Blad, yes. No further questions for this one. Thank you, officer. Do you need him to stay or can he go back? Um, he can be released. Uh, he can stay if he so chooses. All right, you're free to go. He's not involved in the next case? Yes, not. All right, thank you, officer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the people will call Officer Trevor Wharton. Good afternoon. Yeah. Please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes. Thank you. Please have a seat. Officer Wartman, please uh, state your full name and spell your last name for the record, please. Trevor Keith Wartman. Last name's W-O-R-T-M-A-N. And Officer Wartman, uh, were you on duty as a police officer for the city of Sturgis on September 6, 2023? Yes. And did you have contact with a James Cavender? Yes. And uh, is James Cavender here in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you point him out for the record and describe him, please? Yep. We're in a green and off green jumpsuit. And may the record reflect he's identified the defendant. Okay. And Officer Wartman, explain to me how you came into contact with Mr. Cavender on that date. Uh, uh, dispatcher put a uh, BOL or be on the lookout for a stolen vehicle. Uh, they gave a description on uh, the license plate attached to it uh, and said that it was confirmed stolen uh, through lien. And they uh, it stated that it was last seen driving eastbound on East Congress. And where is that? Uh, so it was East Congress in South Nottawa. Um, so by the time they put the VOL out, I started driving down East Chicago, um, just kind of in a parallel manner. And this is in the city of Sturgis in St. Joseph County, Michigan? Yes. Okay. And did you uh, find this vehicle? I did. And tell me about that. I was driving um, eastbound on Chicago. I passed South Lakeview, continuing eastbound well, when I observed the stolen vehicle pulling into Maple Crest Motel off of the East Chicago entrance uh, into the main courtyard area. And when you uh, saw that vehicle, what did you do? I put that information uh, over dispatch, let other officers and dispatch know that I located that vehicle. At that point in time, I pulled in behind the vehicle as it was pulling into an angled parking spot, activated my overhead emergency lights. Uh, and were you in a fully marked patrol vehicle? Yes. And did you have on your issued uniform for the city of Sturgis? Yes. And what happened after that? At that point in time, after I activated my emergency lights, I exited my patrol vehicle, started giving announcements. Uh, the search police department did also uh, draw my duty issued sidearm, put it at a low ready uh, as well. Uh, and did you get the attention of Mr. Cavender? Yes. And, and how do you know that? Uh, there was a Mr. Cavender who was in the driver's seat. I had, saw him look back in my direction. I also saw a front seat passenger look back in my direction as well. And were there other vehicles around? Yes, there are other parked vehicles. And what happened after they looked back your direction? After they looked back, the vehicle uh, reverse lights turned on and the vehicle uh, began to uh, reverse towards the direction of my patrol vehicle out of the parking spot. At that point in time, the front seat passenger had jumped out of the vehicle, and kind of ran uh, away from the vehicle to the side of the building, but didn't flee from the area. And what were you doing or saying at that time? Uh, at that point in time, I was telling uh, the driver of the fence to stop, um, to not do it uh, multiple times. Were there other people around? Yes, there were multiple people around. Uh, can you describe for the record, what is this Maple Crest Motel? Um, it's a single story multifamily 
uh, kind of motel setting. Uh, it's almost like a, a U-shaped or an L-shaped uh, where the vehicle had pulled into, the stolen vehicle had pulled into with the defendant. Um, the only way out of that area is the same entrance that came in off of Chicago. Um, so were you blocking that exit with your patrol vehicle? Correct. Okay. And after this uh, vehicle started backing up towards you, what happened? Uh, past front seat passenger jumped out of the vehicle, uh, and then the vehicle proceeded to drive through the courtyard over some um, stationary boulders or rocks that were kind of for long garden. Uh, drive over that around a U-Haul that was uh, unloading or loading different type of furniture out of it, um, and then proceeded onto a sidewalk that goes in between two of the buildings um, and end up driving through that area before it uh, exited onto Pioneer. And so going back to the path that this vehicle took, this is the identified vehicle that uh, was listed as stolen and lean? Correct. Okay. And it had one person in it after it started leaving the scene? Correct. Okay. And this area that the truck drove through, are there security cameras there? Yes. And did you look at that footage? Yes. And what did you observe on that footage? Uh, I observed the vehicle, um, the, the video surveillance points down the sidewalk in between the two buildings. Um, it doesn't capture where the traffic stop occurred at in the parking lot, uh, but it just shows right on that sidewalk area. Um, so the vehicle coming around the U-Haul um, and kind of drifting in the grass area um, and driving through and striking multiple items that are outside of different uh, the motel rooms. Um, like, so, what kind of items are we talking uh, about? Bags and different types of garden supplies. So um, people's and, personal property? Correct. Okay. And uh, did the truck strike the building at all? Yes. And tell me about that. Uh, the vehicle then proceeded through the uh, after after striking personal property, proceeded through in between the buildings, end up uh, striking the corner of the building um, before it went off camera view. Were there people present where this truck was driving through the courtyard and sidewalk area? Yes. And tell me about that. Uh, not only on the video, um, but while I was making the stop, there were multiple people out walking around in this area. Um, especially in the grass area. Um, when the vehicle started driving through, um, I put that information out over the radio. It drove onto the sidewalk. I could hear multiple people screaming and yelling um, before I was able to actually uh, detain the passenger and go check for any type of injuries. And so you detained the passenger that had gotten out of this stolen vehicle before it left? Correct. After that, did you go speak with the individuals that you had heard screaming? Yes. And tell me what you observed there. I made contact with a uh, pregnant female um, that was right in the area on the sidewalk in between the two buildings. Uh, she did appear to be in pain. She was in kind of a tripod area holding her, her stomach. Uh, was crying, breathing heavily. Um, I had asked her if she was okay, if she was hit by the vehicle. She stated she was not hit by the vehicle. Yeah, you know, at this point, I would have, he can testify to observations, but now he's talking about his conversation. And Your Honor, I would argue that it's admissible as hearsay, as um, excited utterances. Uh, she was under the stress of the event. This is close in time to when the event happened. So I'd ask that he be permitted uh, to testify as to her hearsay statements. It does appear it's close in time to the event, and <clears throat> certainly there would be cause for excitement or distress. And uh, so in this immediate aftermath, uh, I will allow that as an excited utterance. Another judge may have a different opinion, but Mr. Bush's hearsay objection is at this point overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Officer Wortman, um, what did this individual say about her involvement uh, with this incident? She stated that she had to get out of the way of the vehicle, uh, so that she was not hit by the vehicle as it was driving through on that sidewalk in between the buildings. And as a result of that... Um, Just a minute, did we identify this person other than pregnant female? Yes, um, it was Keisha Cutler, Kaisha Cutler, not sure how to pronounce her first name. Do you know the spelling of her first name? K 
K-E-I-S-H-A. I believe I have it as K-E-S-H-I-A. Kesh that, that sounds more, yes. Okay. And so uh, in speaking with Ms. Cutler, can you describe what, uh, how close she was to the vehicle as far as what she had told you? Uh, she had stated that she was right up alongside the building. Uh, the path that the vehicle would have traveled through uh, would have been a sidewalk area. So there's the doors are immediately right to the sidewalk. Um, so where the vehicle traveled, there's not any room, don't want to be any room to stand in between if you're outside your door. Um, and, and by the sidewalk, nothing, a vehicle could not easily go through there without, you know, the concern of it striking someone. And this is the area where the uh, vehicle struck the building and the personal property that was outside of these doors? Correct. Okay. And did Ms. Cutler then get some medical treatment? Yes. Uh, Sturgis Fire EMS was dispatched, arrived on scene and transported her to the hospital. And so you at the Maple Cross gave commands to Mr. Cavender to stop the vehicle and, and get out. Is that accurate? Yes. And he did not heed those commands and he left? Correct. Tell me about uh, this stolen vehicle. Uh, just to clarify, who is the person who reported it stolen? I would have been the registered owner, um, David. I'm not sure how to say his last name. The settle. Settle blood. Settle blood. Okay. Um, he'd have been the one that reported to the sheriff's department. Um, it was entered into lien as stolen, as an active stolen vehicle the day prior. And so this is very close in time. You said the day prior is when it was listed as stolen. Correct. Through lien, that's when it was listed as stolen. Okay. And what is it? I'm sorry, what was that? Your what honor? kind of vehicle is it? Can you describe the vehicle, please? Single cab, uh, GMC Sierra. It was spray painted like a grayish color. And so uh, after this incident was all said and done, what was the disposition of this vehicle, this truck? Where did it go? Uh, the St. Joseph County Sheriff's Department took over that. They ended up getting a tow for it um, and doing any processing they needed on their end for their case. And so, um, was a a seller of the vehicle ever identified? As far as a, sorry, it, it was testified to that um, the defendant said he bought the vehicle for fifty dollars. Was there ever a seller that was identified as part of this? Not to my knowledge. Okay, and this vehicle actually ran correct that it was mechanically working correct okay don't believe i have any further questions at this time you came up behind the vehicle at, at the maple crest apartment stand and more or less blocked it in yeah it was parked into an angle parking spot i pulled into the only drive into that area of the the motel um i wasn't right up on its bumper but there was some a little bit of distance in between and a little unsure, you talked about draw, drawing your sidearm then? Correct. Were you inside your patrol vehicle or, or were you standing outside then? After I had uh, called on dispatch, activated my emergency lights, I would exited my patrol vehicle with my door still open. My sidearm was pulled out at a low ready, so it wasn't pointing at anybody. It was pointed in a secure area, and then I started making announcements to the occupants of the vehicle. From where you were standing in the vehicle, could the defendant have seen the firearm? I'm not sure. Was the door blocking the view? Do you believe? The door was not blocking the view of me or, or my firearm. Well, I didn't know if you said it like you're using the, the door for protection or cover when you got out. Or uh, no, the door just swung open. I stepped out. I was more along the. A and B pillar posts of the vehicle. If that makes sense. And were you broadcasting this through a speaker or were you just using a loud voice when you were communicating with Just them? giving loud verbal commands with my own voice. This was presumably a warm day, so were, were windows open and could, could people hear? As far as 
just in general? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like in the middle of winter when everything was sealed up and the defrosters are running, so. Correct, yeah, it was, a, it was a warm day. So in general, people could hear. When you encountered the, the vehicle that my client was driving, Mr. Cavender, were the windows open? I don't recall. So your primary focus, once the person, the passenger got out of the vehicle was, was, was with that passenger, is that a fair statement then? Yes. And did you ever actually become involved anymore with my client the rest of that day then? No. So last you saw Mr. Cavender, the vehicle was, was traveling by the side of the motel then? Correct. And you identified the vehicle being owned by Mr. Setterblad? Correct. Are you are you acquainted with him? No. No further questions. Ms. Davis, anything further? No. Thank you. Yes. I didn't know they were Thank you. You can step down. Thank you, Ron. Anything further? No further witnesses, Your Honor. Mr. Bush? Mr. Camner would present no witnesses at the floor. Uh, motions, Ms. Davis? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the testimony presented today believe that the elements have been met uh, regarding the charges that have been filed on this felony complaint, as well as an additional charge of fleeing and eluding in the third. <clears throat> Regarding the stolen property, account one, receiving and concealing a motor vehicle, we believe that the uh, information presented in the evidence was that this individual, Mr. Cavender, had possession of the stolen GMC Sierra pickup truck that had been reported stolen just the day before. He had um, kind of weak claims of potentially purchasing it for $50 that day, uh, but there was no um, truth to that, that that could be found. And instead, uh, the police officers were relying on the fact that it had been listed as stolen. It was then later taken by the St. Joseph County Sheriff's Department to be processed um, because it had still been reported as a stolen vehicle. Count two, assault with a dangerous weapon. I would believe that the information presented today does show that there was an assault made upon Kesha, or Kesha Cutler with a dangerous weapon being that motor vehicle, uh, but without intending to commit the crime of murder or to inflict great bodily harm less than murder. Uh, the testimony presented uh, through the uh, hearsay uh, under the, the allowable rules is that um, Ms. Cutler, who is pregnant, was in the walkway area between these two buildings. There's barely enough room uh, for a vehicle to fit. Uh, the vehicle actually struck the building as it went through and struck personal property that was just outside of the doors. And as the officer testified, there wasn't enough room for a, a person to be uh, in that area uh, without the potential of getting hit uh, by this motor vehicle going through this uh, sidewalk area. Um, We'd ask that uh, there be the additional fleeing and eluding in the third degree. Uh, the officer was in a fully marked patrol vehicle in uniform. And uh, according to the jury instructions, uh, you know, we have to prove that he was in fact uh, performing his lawful duties, which he was at that time. He was aware that there was a be on the lookout for a stolen vehicle, multiple calls had come in. There was a specific uh, description of the vehicle with the license plate. He identified the vehicle, he identified the license plate and effected a traffic stop. Uh, second, we'd have to prove the defendant was driving the motor vehicle. And in fact, he has identified that this individual here is the person who was driving it on that date. Uh, third, the officer ordered the defendant to stop the vehicle. Uh, officer Bortman testified he ordered uh, him to turn off the vehicle, get out. He was in an angled parking spot with Officer Wortman blocking the only legitimate exit and entry into this um, parking area and there are other vehicles around. Fourth, that the defendant knew of the order. Uh, Officer Wortman testified that both the defendant and his passenger looked back at Officer Wortman, uh, making eye contact with him. He was uh, just a, basically a car length behind uh, with this angled parking. And fifth, that the defendant refused to obey the order by then trying to flee or avoid being caught. Officer Wortman testified that the defendant put the vehicle in reverse. Uh, the passenger jumped out. 
Then the vehicle continued on around a U-Haul across a yard, striking a large boulder or rock that was in that area, and then uh, driving again through the um, courtyard area between the two buildings, nearly striking uh, the pregnant individual. And then sixth, uh, that the violation either resulted in a collision or accident, which it did. At the end of this, there was um, a collision where the, the defendant hit a tree, airbags were deployed uh, in that accident, and or uh, some portion of this violation took place in an area where the speed limit was 35 miles per hour or less. And as testified to by Officer Ware, uh, these streets where Officer Ware observed this motor vehicle driving uh, were less than 35 miles per hour. Um, both of these officers, would theoretically have been involved in the fleeing and eluding Officer Wortman at the beginning of it, and then um, Officer Ware toward the end of it and at the end of it. And then also um, with that, um, if we're going on the theory that Officer Ware was part of the flee and elude because he was also in a fully marked patrol vehicle and uh, was close in proximity to the individual who admitted that he knew the police were chasing after him. He thought that they shouldn't be, but uh, he knew that they were. Then I would ask that the court also have count four then be resisting obstructing a police officer regarding Officer Wortman. Uh, it's very clear that, again, he was fully marked patrol vehicle in uniform, giving lawful commands to this individual to get out of the vehicle um, before this traffic stop, and he absolutely refused to do that. So under the circumstances, all of this took place in the city of Sturgis, St. Joseph County, Michigan. I would ask that the court bind over on the four counts as requested. Thank you. Mr. Bush. Thank you, Joe. I would ask that the charges be dismissed. Uh, briefly, uh, obviously, that there's issues at trial. Uh, he, he being Mr. Cavender, presented at least a plausible theory that the vehicle had been purchased by him. Obviously, if that's true, he could not be receiving and concealing a stolen vehicle. Uh, assault with a dangerous weapon, I, I do believe the court needs to look at the, uh, the intent of the defendant here. Uh, is there specific intent to do anything that would be that type of an assault? Uh, I suggest this was somewhat egregious, but it was reckless driving. But the, the intention to commit a, something less than murder uh, uh, Keisha Cutler, I don't think it's been shown. Uh, with respect to Officer Wortman, uh, I guess I leave that to the court's discretion. There was some obvious issues with the flame of work. Thank you. Anything further, Ms. Davis? No, Your Honor. Well, there are a couple of issues here. Uh, the receiving concealing a stolen motor vehicle, I wanted to get more information about what it was. First, it was just a single cab pickup that had been painted gray. I learned it was a GMC Sierra, but I don't know how old it was or what kind of condition it was in. Um, someone might buy a 1962, I don't know if GM made a Sierra in 1962, but some old beat up truck for $50. I don't get the impression that's what this was. I also don't know if it was brand new or what, but anyway, in this day and age, you can't buy a truck for $50. Um, it was painted, spray painted gray, and he took off, which would have reason to believe he knew or had reason to believe he knew the vehicle was stolen. So to a probable cause standard, there certainly is sufficient evidence to believe that he was in possession of a stolen vehicle. No evidence that he stole it, but he's not charged with that. So I find enough for fleeing and looting. <clears throat> I mean, for receiving concealing. Fleeing and looting is a little trickier. Officer Wortman's on foot. The fleeing doesn't start until he gets out of his own car. <clears throat> Officer Ware is following him, but only for a block or so. For fleeing and eluding, the defendant is charged 
To prove this charge, the prosecutor must prove each of the following elements beyond a reasonable doubt. Then I'm referring to the fleeing and looting jury instruction found at 13.6C. First, that a police officer was in uniform, check, performing his lawful duties, check, <clears throat> and that the vehicle driven by the officer was identified as a law enforcement vehicle. It was a law enforcement vehicle, but he wasn't driving it. He was standing outside of it, <clears throat> which might and does support the, flint, the resisting and obstructing the police officer. Um, but the officer wasn't driving the car. Um, officer where was driving a car with his lights and siren on. And in the meantime, the, Mr. Cavender is driving through some lawns and hits a tree. So there is sufficient evidence of fleeing looting in the third degree from Officer Ware. Uh, it was a 25 and 30 mile per hour speed zone, not to mention someone's yard. So that would be fleeing and looting in the third degree, which can be added as count two. Um, the assault with a dangerous weapon. Let's look at that instruction. Again, Mr. Bush points out it may be reckless driving, but there's an intent element to assault. Um, and I can't exactly envision the lay of the land here. I'm familiar with Maple Crest. I have a lot of cases from there. We recently had a homicide that took place in the parking lot there. Uh, <clears throat> but I can't envision exactly where this is. I think you might be confusing that with the country hearth. Oh, oh yes, I guess so. Country Hearth is on uh, Chicago Road. <coughs> Assault is defined in the Michigan jury instructions 17.1. To prove this charge, the prosecutor must prove each of the following elements beyond a reasonable doubt. First, that the defendant either attempted to commit a battery or did an act that would cause a reasonable person to fear or apprehend immediate battery. A battery is a forceful, violent, or offensive touching of the person. Second, that the defendant intended either to commit a battery or to make the complainant reasonably fear an immediate battery. Third, the defendant had the ability to commit a battery and appeared to have the ability or thought he had the ability. So. The motor vehicle is arguably a dangerous weapon under the assault with a dangerous weapon. Um, so element three, he intended to commit a battery or to make someone reasonably fear an immediate battery. <clears throat> element two, the defendant either attempted to commit a battery or did an act that would cause a reasonable person to fear or apprehend an immediate battery. Driving like a wild man down a narrow sidewalk um, in a public place where there are people around would certainly cause a reasonable person to fear or apprehend an immediate battery. Um, whether he intended to or not, he certainly wasn't concerned about other consequences, but for preliminary examination purposes, uh, the hearsay excited utterance testimony of Ms. Cutler was that she was placed in fear of an immediate battery. In fact, had to be hospitalized. So I will allow the bind over on that count as well. Um, so that would be count three. Now, four, resisting obstructing a police officer, certainly Officer Ortman had his sidearm drawn, told him to stop, told him to get out of the car. Um, instead, he took off and ended up in a crash. So did assault, bat, or wound? No, but he did resist, obstruct, 
oppose or endanger Officer Wartman. So count four can be the resisting and obstructing. And then the habitual offender portion just gets bound over with it. So you're bound over, probable cause found that you committed a receiving concealing stolen vehicle, probable cause to believe that uh, you assaulted someone with a dangerous weapon, the truck, count three, you did flee and elude at least officer where, count four, you did resist or obstruct Officer Wartman. Uh, there may be other evidence about what, ha I guess once you got there, you just put your hands up. So I don't think there was R and O at the other end. So you're bound over on four counts of complaint and information can be amended. And uh, we'll take a recess and we'll come back and do the next case, the home invasion. Yeah, we have bond issues, but can we hold off on those until the next case and then yeah, I can place that together then if, if that's yeah. okay with the court. That's fine. Okay. Let's take a recess. We'll come back and do the other case. Thank you. Right, let's stop the record.